welcome to the second Inspired by Design webinar um, from the Presentation Guild. Uh, we're still kind of in beta on all this. Um, I'm Nolan Hames. I'm a Microsoft uh, PowerPoint MVP in uh, Montclair, New Jersey, and our um, host or our, our webinar guru here uh, for this is Julie Turberg. She's uh, the art director for the Presentation Guild and a fellow Microsoft PowerPoint MVP for a number of years. She's co-authored a couple of books on presentation and PowerPoint, and she speaks at the Presentation Summit each year. She's the owner of Turberg Design. She specializes in creating custom presentations for clients all around the world. Uh, she lives and breathes, breathes this stuff. Um, so um, we've got just a little housekeeping. We've got 20 minutes. If you have any questions uh, now or during or after, just enter them in the, uh, the Q&A uh, uh, Q box. Um, our next webinar, even though I'll mention again at the end, is going to be Thursday, August 25th. Um, at this point, these are still just for members. So uh, go to presentationguild.org on the events page. That's where you can register. But I'm sure you'll also be getting some email invites. So with that, I'm going to send it over to Julie to take it away for episode number two. Thanks, Dolan. Hi, everyone. Um, excited to start talking about diving in a little bit more on this subject uh, during our first webinar, we talked about ways to be inspired. Um, and this time, we're going to focus on where to keep your finds. Uh, where do you house them all so that you can easily access them later? I'm going to show you some pages in my notebook and some design examples that were inspired by my finds. And of course, I welcome your ideas for future webinars. Uh, what would you like to learn more about in terms of design for presentations? What would you like to see? You can send your ideas um, to Nolan in the chat window during this webinar. Or later on, you can go to the member forum on the Guild website. Uh, you log into presentationguild.org and under the community tab, go to the member forum and suggestion box has a topic called Inspired by Design Potential Topics. We'll cover that at the end of the webinar also. So during episode one, we discussed the concept of copy, transform, and combine, which is remix. We also called it a remix. Um, these three basic elements of creativity um, come together to allow you to be original in your work while drawing inspiration from other sources. Now, this is one of the most important takeaways from this webinar series. You want to transform and combine these sources of inspiration into something that's brand new. We don't want to be accused of stealing, copying, lifting. We want to be original in our work. So where do you look? Here was, again, recapping from episode one. Here are just a couple of places for you to be inspired. Um, I'd love to hear your ideas. Nolan, give me an idea. What are some of your favorite places to look for inspiration when you, when you want something new, something different? Um, I've got, uh, you know, a number of places around the web. I, you know, I get uh, emails from AIGA. I'm, uh, I have, you know, through a, I have an RSS feed for some design websites. Um, I'll tell you one thing that's, that's incredibly inspiring. I get um, regular newsletters from Pentagram, which is one of my favorite design uh, shops. And I just love seeing all the stuff every month they send out something. Here's what we've done. So um, that's, that, that's Thanks. one thing. Yeah, anyone in the audience, if you have any other inspiration sources you'd like to share, please type them in the chat window. Thanks. So, Rick says uh, movies. <laughs> movies, yes, definitely. It's, movie titles are one of my favorites. Um, television titles are even. Um, how, many, how many of you don't love the Game of Thrones opening sequence? I mean, not that we're going to use that in a presentation, but it's pretty inspiring, pretty awe-inspiring. So um, design magazines are a great, a resource for inspiration. How design, print, uh, communication arts. Um, you can see what the pros are doing in various media. Uh, you can discover ideas for layouts, color palettes, patterns, and so on. And other magazines, uh, Wired for instance, they have unique ideas for graphics and typography and colors. Just yesterday I was looking at the new issue of Wired and they have a column called Chartgeist, and um, there was a really clever chart all about um, dots. And so 
I'm going to clip that. I'm going to put it in my notebook for later just because it was unique and inspiring. So don't always think that you have to look online. Um, you can look to other resources to print. Um, how about packaging? as you're perusing the store. I mean, any one of these, look at the patterns, look at the colors, look at the textures, the way that text is laid out. Julie, I'm gonna jump in on magazines. You, if you subscribe to the print, you probably also get the digital version, is that right? Yeah, you get a digital version of um, Wired as well. Right, and that makes uh, screen, you know, saving the stuff on your computer far more, you know, far easier, right? If you see a, a layout you like or something. Except I'm going to show you something with OneNote uh, and the flexibility of having the app on your phone and having the app sync to your OneNote. Cool. So no longer are you limited to capturing something um, on the web. You can capture it. And we all have smartphones with a camera. Cool. So, um, so these packaging designs, um, I... I think you can you can see the possibilities um, in a lot of these particular concepts uh, that would translate well into a presentation. Now, what about designing for corporate templates, corporate presentations? A lot of times we're presented collateral in various media, whether it's a website or a, or um, posters or other print materials, and the client wants us to uh, be inspired by things that the designers are doing in the other media. Um, Nolan, you probably get presented with brand collateral quite often when you're yeah. designing presentations, yeah. correct? All the, all the time. I mean, I, I ask for it. I mean, that's the first yeah. question, especially with a new client. You, you know, you have to ask, do you want, do you need this to uh, complement or match, you know, your current website, your print materials? And sometimes the answer is yes, sometimes no. Right, for one-offs, not, not, not always necessary. Um, but every one of these pieces of collateral has a lot of elements that would look stunning and dynamic and work well in a presentation series. And I will say just on brand guidelines, very often, you know, you might have a 100-page brand guideline book and maybe one page, if you're lucky, is devoted to presentation. So, you And know, they're usually pretty weak. Oh, they're, they're awful. <laughs> but, but you can look at the print material, the web stuff, and take it into presentation because exactly. you're a presentation designer. Exactly, we can we can glean ideas and and uh, for this particular template, we were able to get a lot of wonderful ideas from these, especially these posters. So where do you put it all? Um, now on our last call, uh, on our last webinar, um, Lee mentioned that he uses um, Airtable. And Wendy said that she uses a PowerPoint file organized by sections. Um, I'd love to hear from others if you have a different uh, method for storing your finds, storing your ideas. Um, I personally use OneNote. Evernote is very similar. Um, but OneNote, I began using it at a client's request, and it became my favorite way to keep project information as well as inspirational ideas. Um, what I like about it is that it's really easy to use. It's easy to organize your finds, and it, you can look at things at a glance. You're not looking through a series of slides in a presentation, for instance. Um, you have a big picture view, and as I said earlier, you can also sync from your phone. Uh, OneNote is available for Android and iOS also, so it, it's real simple. And um, I, I use Evernote, but one reason I do like OneNote for this purpose is in each note, you can move things around like a light table. It's much more yeah. flexible, right? It's yeah. not just you know, linear. It's very flexible. Um, one thing I'd like to mention in conjunction with OneNote is that um, Snagit is is forever my probably my favorite tool, my, my uh, favorite working tool. Um, I use it all the time. Snagit, I use within my work in presentation work, and I also use it to um, copy inspirational ideas and paste them into OneNote. Uh, if you're not familiar with Snagit, the screen capture program, it's uh, uh, made by a company called TechSmith, and the, the program is Snagit, and it is the um, premier screen capture utility. Um, so let's let's dive right in. Let's go into OneNote, and we'll we'll start talking about some ideas here. And and I'd like to get some more information from you as well. So this is OneNote, and you'll see that my um, at the top here I have a series of tabs. 
and you can you can look at OneNote in, in a few different. Let's look at the look at the basic structure here. This tab sends you to your different file drawers, if you will, and this file drawer, this file folder is Design Inspiration. Within that, you have a series of tabs. You can continue to add as many as you need and rename them to whatever you like. Think of these as file folders within your drawer. And over to the right side here, you have pages. Now, I was probably a little bit too lazy to divide my work in these folders into pages. Perhaps I will someday, maybe not. But you can add as many pages as you need within that folder. So let me collapse that back. What I typically do is that within the textures folder, I just continue to add ideas. And what I do periodically is I'll go through here and I'll delete ones that I find no longer inspiring or maybe dated or, you know, I've used them enough, get rid of them and start adding new and continue to refresh this folder. So these are textures that I found and, and liked and, and thought would make a good um, inspiration for a future project. Julie, instead of deleting, couldn't you just move them to an uninspiring notebook? <laughs> and why would I want to say that? <laughs> uh, it prob there pro probably is quite a bit in here that I need to weed out. Um, in, in this case, this is my broad, this is a broad design inspiration notebook. Now, a lot of times I'll create a notebook um, for a specific project, in which point you'd consider that maybe a mood board and you start throwing ideas together of concepts that you think might work for that particular project. This one is way more general and way more broad uh, in terms of what I've included here. It's all things that, I, that appealed to me and I thought would work well in a presentation context. Um, I barely scratched the surface at using, it, using some of these elements, but you will see some of these things in the work we're gonna share over the next um, series the future series of the webinar. So these are all shapes. And then I've got some infographics. And these are pulled from all over the place, right? Just yeah, most of these are, uh, are from the web, uh, from, from different sources on the web. Some of them came from print and very few of them came from print. But so I captured them uh, either with my phone or a scanner and, and threw them in here. Um, pictures and text. And there's one that might look familiar. This is an actual <laughs> slide from Nolan. Yeah, you don't have a whole lot of slides here, right? No. As a matter of fact, as I said in episode one, I'd rather not take my inspiration from other presentations. I think it's, uh, um, I think it's a little bit too confining. I think we need to look at other sources and combine all of those sources to come up with something fresh and new. We we don't want to be um, we don't want to be repeating other designers' presentation work. We want to come up with something new. And there's also just far more in just the overall world of graphic design to pull from. Yeah. So quotes. How many times are you try have you tried to come up with a a unique quote design for your templates or your presentations? And different quote marks and different ways to organize the quote text itself. Large quotes, quotes cut off the edge of a shape. This is interesting. That would make a great concept on a slide layout. Here's a large quote with the text set off to the right. And what color palettes? You never know when you're going to need to come up with a brand new palette uh, for a presentation. And these inspired me for various reasons. Um, in certain cases, um, the, you know, most cases the client will have a color theme in their brand guide, uh, but oftentimes we're, we're charged with creating a unique palette for a one-off presentation. Julie, do you share uh, these with anybody? I mean, I know you, um, you know, you know, are not working with a huge team of designers, but could I you? have collaborated with notebooks with other folks on projects. Um, I haven't shared this particular notebook just because it's a personal 
mm -hmm. notebook. But you can collaborate and you can share your notebooks and you both can add new things and make notes off in the margins. You can just start typing. Yeah, we use um we use OneNote to collaborate uh, for uh, the presentation podcast. There's mm -hmm. it's all text, mm -hmm. uh, no images, but you could easily um, you can easily share a notebook, correct? And, and to those who haven't used it, all of this is saved all the time, dynamically. I mean, I don't ever have to hit save. It's right, two automated. people can be in yeah, on a page at the same time editing. Arrows. I'm always looking for creative, hand-drawn looking arrows. And uh, so when I find some interesting ones, I will save them for later. Charts. This is a cool idea with the thermometer dots. That would be an interesting infographic on a slide. This one, I think our fellow Presentation Guild um, board member Glenna Shaw did something a little bit similar with, with this technique of filling up a circle. Kind of a change on a pie, you know, mm -hmm. different from a pie. Icons, icon styles. Here's those strong shadows. We discussed this a little bit on the last call. And layout ideas. Take a look at a few of these. I mean, this would make a dramatic slide layout, wouldn't it? with that interesting trapezoidal shape. How about these as picture placeholders on an angle like that, the diamond photograph shapes? That would be dramatic. Well, um, oh, you'd have to use a diamond. You couldn't just uh, rotate a square because then it would come um, in. No, you couldn't rotate it. Yeah. Um, you, but there is there is a diamond shape, isn't there, PowerPoint? We can we can make picture placeholders into any shape you'd like. That's that's another maybe, webinar, I think. Maybe that maybe that's, maybe that's a topic for another webinar. So sometimes if you are um, <laughs> faced with a blank slide, it helps to take a few minutes, go through your inspiration, maybe search for some new inspiration, take a look at some things and be inspired to start your new project. And uh, somebody just pointed out, you can also, if you have a tablet, you can also just draw. You can just handwrite notes in uh, OneNote as well, right? Yes, you can. I mean, even an you could bring in something and annotate, you know, I like this part of it. Or, you know, yes, like you that. can. Yep. So um, I'd love to hear your uh, thoughts on saving inspiration. Um, uh, Lee, Wendy, you already said that you save your ideas in different different ways. What types of things do you save for your inspiration? Are you saving images? Are you saving backgrounds? Are you saving all kinds of things? Um, I'm, I've got a I've got a wide range here. Love to hear what you, what types of things that you save for your design inspiration. Let's go. We've got a few minutes left. I'm going to go back, Nolan. Sure, no problem. Or uh, what things you feel you should be saving and aren't. We don't always, we're not always, or what, what thing you wish you had saved uh, now, now that you, now you can't find on the web or where you saw it. Well, let's take a look for a second here at a couple of the textures that were in my notebook. Wendy, uh, Wendy says she saw a bunch of marketing stuff in a Verizon store. Um, yeah. So, it, it, so Wendy was snapping pictures in the Verizon <laughs> store. That's awesome. So any one of these textures uh, that I called up would make a great, um, dramatic, um, beautiful visual background for a statement or a, an opening slide or a closing slide, something real. Here's another one, the leaf texture. And how about something from my uh, text and picture inspirations? Combine those ideas into this quote. This particular quote, you're going to notice that it uses some non-standard fonts. And we're going to talk about using non-standard fonts and how to get away with it in future episodes also. Uh, maybe where to find interesting handwritten and cursive fonts. Nolan, have you been using a lot of handwriting fonts lately? Um, not a lot. Occasionally, there's one that I go to, but so often I just need to, I need to outline it. Um, but again, that's, I think that's another... Uh, that's another um, webinar. Another webinar. Do you have any last? Um, uh, oh, okay. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. 
I hit the I hit the I hit the go button here. Uh, one last series uh, from that notebook you just saw, some circular overlapping photographs. Um, how about a texture on the right hand side taken from another piece of inspiration, and that combined at the bottom into a slide, um, with the texture in the background and the overlapping circular photographs. Just so you can see how these these pieces of inspiration were transformed and combined into something new. That's great. That's, re that's a really nice example of, of picking little pieces and combining it into something that is completely your own, uh, completely uh, original design. It simply takes little bits here and there. You're not copying a whole layout. Um, so uh, I think we're good. I think we, you know, let's, we're, we're, we're just a minute or two over time, but I, I don't think that's a, a Big deal. Do we have any um, sort of last questions for 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 Julie? Or anything uh, anybody else wants to throw out in terms of their own um, processes or or ways of of saving inspiration? Um, and after the webinar, if you have ideas you want to share later, log into the Guild website and go to the community tab, and then the member forum. And in the member forum. Uh, in the suggestion box, we have a, uh, an inspired by design potential topics. We'd love to see your ideas. Any, any last questions? Oh, thank you, Wendy. I think we're using the chat window and not, not the questions, but uh, good. I think, um, I think we, uh, that, was, that was excellent, Julie. It was a lot of, uh, a lot of great information. It's nice to see it actually in, in practice, to see you know, behind the scenes at Turberg Design exactly how you do this stuff. Um, so that's really nice. Um, thank you. Uh, this was our number two. Number three webinar is going to be again in a month, Thursday, August 25th. Uh, you can sign up on the events page at the Guild website. Uh, there's a link for that in the chat window. And uh, again, you'll probably also get an email about that. So we hope to see everybody there uh, next month. Julie, thank you very much. Thanks, Nolan. All Bye, right. everyone. Bye, guys.